everyone I finally made it out to the kitchen again for the first time in a few weeks as far as with the camera anyway I mean I'm out here every day I still use the Dreo chef maker to cook just about every steak I eat really every steak I eat I've been using the Dreo chef maker and I love it uh, and I got my hands on something new today this is called a ranch cut steak it comes from the beef chuck and this is two eight ounce pieces it's a little smaller than I usually go for for steak, but this was given to me by somebody to try, so I wanted to give it a try. Normally chuck is a little tougher piece of meat, so I really wanted to give the chef maker a chance to use its sous vide feature to really test and see how well it can do with a, with a cut of meat like this. Normally, uh, from what I've read from other people and from chefs, is they tell me they use something that's going to have a little bit of acidity to it to marinate these in to help them be a little more tender like maybe a, a citrus juice or some apple cider vinegar or apple uh, what do you call it red wine vinegar rather I'm not going to be using any of that I am just going to get these salted ahead of time with with some Redmond smoke salt which has been my absolute favorite thing to use ever since I discovered smoke salts I just got a new bag of my favorite stuff in and I've added it to my bottle here the cherry Redmond smoke salt absolutely the best but let's go ahead and get these salted and I'm gonna let these sit for an hour or more just depends because I'm not quite ready to eat yet and since these are already defrosted unlike most of the steaks I usually make where I start from frozen it gives me the time to actually put salt on them ahead of time normally when I'm cooking steaks from frozen I put the salt on them right after I defrost them just a few, like for a minute inside the air fryer to knock the frost off the edges or I'll even sometimes use my little creme brulee torch here to burn off the uh, to burn off some of the frost around the edges of the steak so that it'll let the salt stay in but when the steak is nice and defrosted like this the salt should be able to stick to it without any difficulty I'm just throw in some paper towels here so I can pat these dry real quick patting them dry apparently helps to bring the moisture out of the meat more instead of using just the moisture that's on the surface I don't do it all that often so I don't really get a chance to experience it enough to notice if there's a difference but maybe because I do my steaks almost always with the salt added just before I cook them maybe I will notice a difference this time of course this is a different cut of meat so I expect I'll notice some difference either way See if I can get a little bit on the sides here. There we go, and we got those all salted up now. And I'm gonna let these sit in the refrigerator for at least an hour. Let the salt really soak into the meat and bring out some of that flavor. And then we'll be ready to cook. All right back let's get this party started these have been sitting now for about three hours and I'm gonna set my chef maker on to chef mode so I'm gonna need the probe today and to pick one of the pieces of meat here stick it right in the center of the thickest part try to keep it in the middle and then put the other steak side by side with it in here now I do tend to separate them a little bit on the on each side so that there's more airflow going between the two steaks. All right, let's see. Let's set it on chef mode. Beef going down to. Well, let's see. What is this? This is this doesn't have a setting specifically. So I'm going to set it to the closest thing. I'm going to set it as a ribeye. And we'll go with medium rare sous vide flavor it says 45 to 75 minutes so we're in the raising temp mode and it's calculating how much time is left I'll try to keep track of the time for you so you can see how long this actually takes 
and then we'll try these ranch steaks for the very first time. All right, it's ready. It took 48 minutes to go through the complete sous vide cycle. So let's see what we got. It looked good. Guess I could have used something other than a fork to pick them up with. You don't want to run all your juices out right away. So you don't want to stick a fork in it like I just did on that first one. And one thing I do notice about these, aside from other chuck steaks, or different than other chuck steaks, is there was not a whole lot of fat. It's actually a little bit more looking like a tenderloin cut. Let me wash this out real quick. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and run it through the maintenance cycle to clean the water out. All right, let's give this a try. Take a look at what we got. And I got a bunch of stuff on my table over there, so I'm just gonna cut into it right here. You know, one thing I can tell after having a couple of bites is that the the smoke salts don't have as strong of a salty flavor when you let them sit for a while like I did on these ones. Usually they come out quite salty, but I like salty. So when I cook them and their uh, the salt was just added before I put it in, it has a very different flavor. Not that it's better or worse necessarily. It's just different. It doesn't have as strong of a salt flavor. It's got more of the smoke flavor this way. I had never heard of this cut of steak before trying this and I gotta say the one thing I like about it is that even though it's not a fatty cut it's very tender surprisingly tender for a piece off of the chuck but it's also surprisingly devoid of fat and I like a little fat with my meat but this is a good cut of meat delicious so I definitely I have no complaints on the tenderness of this it's not like eating a piece of chuck steak at all. Chuck steak would be a lot tougher than this. Even when I've done chuck steak on sous vide mode in here, this is different. Hmm. So from what the chefs at my work tell me about this cut of steak, is that this is a very rare cut that you can find, and it's called the ranch cut or the pub ranch cut. I don't know why they call it that, but let's find out. All right, let's see real quick what the experts say about this cut of steak. Hi, my name is James Holtzlag from the Hart and Trouter Butcher Shop. So what we have here is the rancher steak. Um, it sits right next to the flat iron, right next to the shoulder blade. And so what I'm gonna do is demonstrate how we clean them and cut them up for steaks. It's a good alternative to something like a sirloin tip. This side, as you can see, is a good amount of silver skin. Now the fat you could leave on or you could take off, kind of up to you. Leave it on! We take off all the fat here in the shop. All right, and that's pretty much all they go into in that video. Uh, I let it play out and there was, there was <laughs> nothing more to see there. But let's see what the website says about it. The rancher steak is a real tasty cut of meat. I'll agree with that. Very underrated with many butchers and beef buffs claiming it makes a great alternative to more expensive cuts such as a sirloin tip or a flat iron steak. I never considered those expensive cuts, but if it's cheaper than those, that makes it really a darn good choice. Comes from the shoulder area of the cow, therefore the muscle is worked a little more compared to other primals, leading it to a lacking of the tenderness of some other cuts. But what it lacks in ease of eating compared to others, it makes up for in its fully beefy flavor. In order to earn the moniker of ranch steak, it needs to be trimmed of all excess fat. Ah, silver skin. I don't really care for the silver skin, so that's fine. And connective tissue, so that it's very lean. It must also be free of the strip of gristle running through the middle, which we will talk about later in this guide. So there's more information you can read about the ranch steak here on this uh, Food Fire Friends website. I'll put a link for that in the description.
Meanwhile, let's get back to the video. I don't know why they call it that, but it tastes pretty darn good. So I'm not complaining. And if it's inexpensive compared to say a piece of chuck or even a, even a ribeye, then this is a great alternative. And it came out wonderful in the Dreo Chef Maker. So I'm very happy with it. Mm. Delicious. Well, that's it for this one, guys. If you wouldn't mind, stick around for a quick message from one of my sponsors, and I'll see you guys next time. I love it just as much as I did before. If we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat? Oops. Still juice on my flip flop.